Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens, also known as Dave the Cyber Guy, and I'm here with Andrew the Security Guy. Welcome, Andrew. Hey, everybody. And we got some guests Good here to today. Uh, Stanley and Tim, they're going to introduce themselves from Hawaii High Tech Support or Tech Support? Hawaii Tech Support. Hawaii Tech Support. Yeah. And the reason we got you guys on the show today is we're going to be starting to talk about uh, why is it important to trust your tech support? There's some things we need to talk about with tech support because it's a matter of trust. You guys that help people out, you're helping them out with one of the most sensitive instruments they've got, their Absolutely. computer, their smartphone, their internet, and uh, all their personal data flows through that thing and all resides on that thing. It's all in the cloud. And you guys have the privilege of helping those people out without harming their data or harvesting their data. And they got to know who to trust right. and why to trust. So let's start with you. And you are the CEO of your own company now? Yes. How did you start? How did you get here and start this company? Absolutely. So the company started in 2004. I was uh, in California uh, prior to working in IT, uh, the early days, first dot com. Booth. Northern? Southern? Southern. Southern. LA, yep. Okay. And then I went to school out there, computer science. And where'd you go? UCLA. So, UCLA yeah, Computer Science. Computer Whoa. Science. Yeah, so, Serious. Yeah, after coming home, um, grew up here. After um, living there for a while, decided to come home and yeah, be back part of Good this for community. you. Yeah. No, no more contributing to the brain drain. Yeah. Got to bring yeah. back yeah. from UCLA. Absolutely. Seriously. Yeah. So Stanley Lau, right? Yeah. CEO. Yeah. And how did you decide to do tech support as a business model? Yeah. So... In terms of what we do right now, we actually, the tech support, it's so varied, right, in terms of what we do. It's, um, I think the name itself kind of just, it doesn't really pigeonhole us, but it really, um, when you think of tech support, you think kind of low-level um, L1 type services, but the, the services that we provide actually span all IT needs in a business. Right, when so, you hear tech support, yeah. you think running cable, hook up my printer. Yeah, or call, call, pick up a phone and call, but that's not all that we do. Right, right. Um, but it's just the name has stuck, and it's actually, um, you know, one of the, one of, in terms of Google searches. Friendly great, name. Great, Friendly name. Yeah, yeah it comes great right keywords. up. keywords. Yeah. 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 So, Tim, yep. Tim Ames, you are the CTO, the Correct. Chief Technology Officer. Yeah. And uh, did you, did you lose a bet and you had to Hire him or? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I brought in the big guns. Yeah, actually, uh, so I have a little bit of different history than Stan. He went through the uh, IT, he went through the commercial side. I came up through the uh, Department of Defense side. Oh, uh, so I was 10 years active, yeah. du uh, active duty Marine Corps. Got out, came Six over five, to Hawaii. brother. Yes, yeah, right five. on. All right. Uh, yeah. Came over to Hawaii, um, joined the Hawaii Army National Guard. I actually retired a couple years ago as a chief warrant officer. From the National Guard? Yes. It's okay. I like you anyway. That's right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I, I did a stint with the financial industry. So I was a, a director of information security for a $4 billion financial institution. Wanted to come back to Hawaii, bring some of my experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, that I learned abroad back to Hawaii, and uh, you know my, my wife's from here, so it, it, we're, we're, we're here forever. Good for so, you. Yeah. Nice. No, I, I love to see, the, especially from the DOD side, when people get out of the service, mm -hmm. we try to encourage them to make the transition to civilian life and keep their skill set here. That kind of motivation, that dedication, that discipline, yeah. and, and all that skill that you have, and then people move back home. We want them to stay here. Sure. So thank you for staying. So what do you guys do? What's what's the crux of how you perform business on a day-to-day? -day? I know tech support is that huge umbrella. Everything yeah. from, do you help people with like their OS upgrades at companies all yep. the way down to, hey, I can't get in my email today? Yeah, so we're right? actually a little more focused. We're, we're business B2B only. So oh, okay. we only service okay. businesses. Um, but the core of what we do is um, in the industry, we're uh, MSP, managed service provider. So mm -hmm. we're basically outsourced IT for businesses. We handle everything from help desk support all the way through implementation, security, um, everything IT related in a company. So for small businesses, it's massively uh, important to save on costs, right? Yes. And this kind of thing could save you a lot of money rather than have two or three of the tech guys on site all right. the time, right? Well, not only save on costs, but it increases your bench strength. So if you hire a guy, you know, hire a couple guys that may have a good specialty in sysadmin, you know, they might know their Windows products, they might have a good web developer. Um, when it comes to 
when it comes to doing networking, networking security, um, some of the more esoteric uh, needs and requirements of a business uh, on the, in the technology sector, um, that's where we come into play. So we do have that bench strength. We have security experts. We have network experts. We have uh, Windows and Linux experts. And it could be we, a real help because right. uh, some companies will do Cisco, other Palo Alto networks, in other words, Fortinet, right. or they might have a mix of it. And you, you don't have one guy that knows them all, right? So they call you guys. You might have a channel to each one of them. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You don't want to depend on things like Talos and stuff to take care of every little problem. Mm -hmm. So um, what else do you provide? Uh, email service, the phone support. I think it's probably really important, right? Do you do 24-7 phone support? Yeah, we do. So we actually work with, uh, we have a 200-person help desk team. 200 people. Right. That's wow. actually part of a partner um, group that we do. And so we are able to offer the 24 by 7 support. Um, to our customers. And Out that's of the huge. islands, or you do a rotational around the world? Yep. It's a little bit of a hybrid model. Yeah. Uh, hybrid, yeah. okay. Yeah. So you have call centers at different places, yeah? Right. I know Microsoft moved to that model now. You can call, you get Nova Scotia, or you get something in the Dakotas, or you might get Chennai, India, and mm -hmm. it's just wherever it's daylight. You know, someone's working on, on yeah. that. Yeah, it's following the sun. Following it, the sun. It's a good model because you know, the, the, your issue is always being handed off to somebody that's awake and, and yeah. up and, and, you know, <laughs> not on you're, not really, yeah. you're not working with that midnight shift, you know, the right, guys right. that are, aren't really happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> I've had those guys before. So you work with, uh, what other countries do you work with? Where are your call centers? Yep. So what can I know? Actually, they're primarily um, in the U.S. In the U.S. East Coast. East Coast centers. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've never been to the East Coast. You guys been to the East Coast? DoD must have gone over there. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in D.C., uh, Boston. Different uh, mindset. Sure. Um, but now that you're back here, the similarities and differences you see in your business model now, the versus East Coast versus the Hawaii customer. I, I think um, so. One of the biggest differences, I think, is that um, people think that Hawaii is is technologically behind. No. Where that's not absolutely, absolutely not is the case. Is that true? That's what people think about it? <laughs> 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 I, I think that's something, you know, Ethernet was invented at UH. And, you know. It's, that's it's, right, Aloha Net. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, when it comes to, like, businesses and, and, like, the, we don't have a lot of huge corporations. We don't have a lot of those, you know. $20 billion corporations, but we do have a lot of small, medium-sized businesses that need that kind of you know, enterprise support that you don't get unless you have the big IT teams. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably been the biggest difference is, is that you don't have a lot of big IT teams and a lot of these core businesses, but what you have is you have a lot of smaller teams that are you know, more dynamic. And uh, unfortunately, what people get into a company over here and they don't move around a lot, which is good for the company, but at the same time, it's, uh, it, if you're not training that employee, if they're not growing with the technology, it mm -hmm. becomes kind of like a stagnation. So that's a mainland thing, right? Yeah. Every two and a half to three years, you're moving between companies, and you pick up a massive amount of experience in enterprise environments in right. different company sets, right? Different business models, right. different programming models. And yeah, and people out here tend to stay with the job five, ten years. So you mm -hmm. need to train them more. Which is, do you yeah, guys train also? Right, absolutely. That's, you, that's you one you of train? our corners. Yeah. 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 All right. You do security training, user training. What do you do? What kind of training? So there's a there's a few different fronts. You mm -hmm. mentioned the primary goal for us is customer service is big. Mm -hmm. So we focus on that. In addition to the technical training, we have different tracks um, that we go through different platforms. So that's something that. Like you mentioned here, we try, you know, as a business owner, I think it's tough to retain really good people. And that's one of the things that we really need to focus on is to be able to get people uh, motivated and, and trained up. Tremendously so, difficult to hold on to people, especially because it's so expensive to live out here. Mm -hmm. And if someone offers you a job for, say, 20K more a year, you have to go. It's not yeah. like you can stay, right? And you can't keep raising everybody's pay to keep them. Right. So what do you do to motivate people to stay on board? And how many, can I ask? About how many businesses you serve right now? Yeah, so we're right now we're at about 80 companies. 80 companies? Locally. Wow. And so, like Tim was saying, because Hawaii, the mix of business really is we're uh, primarily small business driven um, here. So that's the core of our business. We're finding that there is a large market for what we do. Um, but, you know, I think Andrew knows as well, it's, it's a great marketplace for small businesses and it's, it's a good focus for us. So I know if small businesses are watching right now, they're probably asking, do I have to pay thousands up front or can I just do a, a per phone call model or a per visit model or 
well, how, how do I get involved? If I'm a small business, say I'm, I just opened up my liquor store, mm -hmm. and you know now I have a POS, now I have some other kind of computer equipment in the shop, and I want to remote in and have some security cameras. So I call Andrew for the security cameras, but I call you guys for tech support. Right. How do you handle that? So it's really going in and doing an assessment. That, that's step one. It's to say, look, these are all the disparate systems that you've brought in over time, and we want to make those, you want to coalesce those into a good business solution for you. And then we want to get it baselined. You know, we want to get that security patching done. We want to get you up to the current operating system. We want to get you up to your, you know, current hardware systems that you need. So that's the initial outlier of money. So let, let's go back for just a second. You, you said we want to baseline it. So right. for our viewers out there, you want a baseline of something because you're looking for anomaly detections. Correct. Right? You want to know uh, if I'm using this amount of bandwidth through the day, but yeah. all of a sudden I get this huge spike to a whole bunch of websites I've never been to before. Sure. That's an anomaly. You can yeah. say, hey, set off an alarm, mm -hmm. right? And call you guys. Yeah. And so before we even bring on a customer, what we want to do is bring them up to a good patch level. You know, make sure all the security patches are applied. Make sure that they have the right authentication model. You know, now, so that's that not people just are for in. operating systems, mm -hmm. right? You're already talking about applications. Uh, electronic applications and yeah. applications, Correct. and and your uh, network devices yeah. all have to be patched. Oh, up even on the physical level. security devices, right. the yes. camera systems. I mean, if those need, just go left unpatched, yes. those firmwares need to be patched as Big well. Problem. Right. Yeah, Big that's problem. a huge problem. And then patching them because sometimes they're air gapped. Well, right. but that's one, but, network. you know, I think you guys probably see, you know, the, the small business guys are trying to save money, so they're running all this stuff on a single LAN, right? right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, escalation of privilege for services and applications is a problem. So rarely, you know, they've had some vendor come in and drop something, and another vendor came in and drop something, and no one's really paid attention to the user privileges that are mm -hmm. out there. And that, mm -hmm. that, you know, if you get something, some malware anchored in there, Escalation of privilege makes it fairly easy to move around, especially if it's a you know a network running across one switch, right? You can yeah. kind of see everything all of a sudden. And life gets easy for for a hacker, and you know, I think there's a lot of vulnerability that, you know, when the services that they're bringing, the small businesses owners are, are interested in their own business, and they just don't have time to 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 take care of their IT environment. Classic right? you business know? problem. You start yeah, your it's, business. It's in, yeah. You don't have time to do taxes. You don't have to do you know like payrolls. A big thing. Sure. You want to outsource legal. And, and, and IT is going to be another time yeah. uh, consumer, right? Mm -hmm. So calling you guys, that's a that's a good way to yeah. spend a little bit of money and solve a big problem. Yeah. And making it preventive, too. So once we get somebody to that baseline level, we want to build them, build them into a, a kind of a preventive maintenance model so that instead of calling us when something breaks, we'll keep it from breaking. Yeah. You know, So we'll do the patches monthly. We'll do the... We'll, we'll keep control of your disk sizing. So if, you're, if you start to run out of space or if your power supplies start to fail, before those fail, you know, in the middle of the day and bring down productivity, we'll say, hey, look, we're getting these alerts, we're getting these errors. Let's bring you down on Saturday night, 2 a.m. We'll switch it out, and then you won't lose any productivity. And make sure they're doing backups. Right. right. Oh Absolutely. my gosh. They backups, all think they're yeah. doing backups. <laughs> How many of them do you find out? They call you. Well, we we were doing backups, but the yeah. the little sand yeah. drive died a year ago. We didn't know. Right. Right, right. Or whatever. Right. Like no one checks the backup. No one ever tries to restore them to make sure that. Yeah, that, that's, that's a key. Thing. That's, that's a key. Yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta go through the plan to make sure the plan works. That's right. Otherwise, right. it's not right. a real plan. And so many people don't test their backups. Mm -hmm. So it's just an overriding of this bad data. Over over and over and yep. over again, and you never know if it's going to work until uh, you need it. Until you need yeah. it, then you know it doesn't work, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a terrible thing. And a lot, I know a lot of people will uh, hook up their backup drive to the main computer and they'll just leave it in there, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they get hit with the ransomware. Yeah. And of course, that's a network to drive. Yeah. So of course, your your that's backups are not right. even from a physical perspective. I mean, we live in Hawaii. We have elements to worry about. You know, rain, water, you know, ocean. It's all there. Oh. So if you all have your, drives all your I stuff in one spot and you get flooded in that one spot, you know, no offsite backup, yep. you, you lost good. the whole. That's right. You guys yeah. utilize the cloud a little bit more now, right? Absolutely. Would you recommend this to uh, Amazon or Azure? Uh, what, Google? Do you use Google? We're agnostic. Uh, we actually use. Good for um, you. I like that. We, we, use a, we use what works for the customer, what, use, okay. what works for the business case. Um, AWS has really good product with Glacier. That's Amazon Web Services. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon and Glacier Web is the 
slow product. Long-term storage. So you, if right. you need it back, it could take anywhere from 30 minutes to six hours, right. depending on where it's stored and how it's right. stored. So it has its its purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but, but it's, it's cheap. super yeah. inexpensive. It's super yeah. cheap. It's like a yeah. penny a meg or yeah, something. Yeah, it's, really, mm -hmm. it's a good deal. Uh, whether, whether or not you use the S3, which is a simple S3's, storage service, yeah, and, and it's yeah. just immediate. It's right. basically on your hard drive as, as fast as your internet speed is. Absolutely. We have to take a quick break, pay some bills. Uh, not that we pay bills. But we'll be right back. <laughs> Until then, stay safe. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. Let's do the second half of the show. We've already been introduced to Andrew, the security guy, Tim Ames and Stanley Lau from Hawaii Tech Support, and they've been great in telling us their business model, how they came to start the company and what they usually do for customers and how they help customers uh, get done what they need to get done so they don't have to run a business and be their own tech support. So that, that's a drag. A lot right? of value there. Right. If you're not an IT person, but you want to, you know, if you guy that makes Rick shirts or, or yeah. Sig Zane, you don't want to concentrate on the computer. You want to do your art, right? Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about something else that uh, happened on the 28th. We got a, an alert, but we already knew that. You guys being in the business, you, this alert came out from the United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team. Mm -hmm. Cert. Yes, I always want to say response team. Uh, I don't know why. Anyway, you assert the, the blanket emails that come out to all of us nerds and, and it said, hey, beware of tech support fraud. Let's talk about tech support fraud and how people can fall for it because I have family members who have fallen for it and it sounds pretty believable, especially when they go to a website and you get that pop-up, your computer's infected, please call this number right away. And you get somebody on the other end of the line that sounds just like tech support, yeah. usually from another country, and they help you through it, and they always say, well, we need to take control by remote. Would you install this little utility for us? And uh, how, how do we know it's you guys versus the bad guys? Yeah. My, my recommendation is we're never going to ask you for your password. We're never going to ask you for your information. If you get a call from us, and, and this can be you know manipulated, so you might get a call that says it's from us, that can be manipulated. Mm -hmm. But if you get a call from us, we're not going to ask you for your information. We're calling you. We should know who you are. We should also know things about you that you only you should know. You know, so there there should be some kind of you know uh, like what I saw you at Foodland last night. Remember? <laughs> I, well, and, and that's the poker yeah. counter. That's well, a good thing. Only there. That we could <laughs> yeah. But yeah. for your home customers, for your home customers, that, that's who I'd be more concerned about. Because yeah. with our business customers, we already have relationships. If they call us, they know who they're talking to. You know, we already have that relationship. But your home customers would that get the pop-ups or get these drive-by downloads where they go to a website. And malicious code gets installed. You know, JavaScript, you know, cross-site mm -hmm. script get installed on their uh, in their web browser. They're going to get a notification on their screen that says, "This is Microsoft Tech Support. Call this number." Now, this is even worse because by the time they're calling that number, they're already all in. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. they clicked it. Yeah. They're the yeah. ones initiating the call. So this becomes even worse. They call the number. The person on the other end is really good. These guys are really good customer support. I want them on my help desk. <laughs> That's how good they are. They're yes. smooth. They're good talkers. They can talk the least technical person through opening up a remote session. Patient. That, yeah. you know, that is a skill and to translate geek to human, mm -hmm. right? I yeah. mean, that, that is a serious it. skill. They're social engineering. You don't just, yeah, you don't get out of school and you have all this knowledge and, and then you can describe to your CEO why you need a new firewall. Well, you they're... need to be able to... Yeah, they're training. Play to your audience, I mean, there's right? Training academies, yeah. they're training them to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Owned by, you know who owns them. Dave owns most of them. He's the only guy that ransoms his own family. You know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that hasn't happened in a while. I mean, uh, I never did that. I listened to an actual <laughs> stage call recently. Yeah. And it's amazing what they'll tell you. So there was a university in New York. They set up uh, fake, had their CS students or ICS students call these these companies and entertain, you know, a, a situation. And nice. it's amazing yeah. what these tech support guys, and this call went to India, and I think it's upwards of 80% of these phony help desk scams come from India. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, you, if you listen to it, the guys are so good. They're so patient. And the way they lure you in, you know, they start talking about, um, if you start saying, my computer's, oh, it's getting old. It's about two, three years old. Response is, no, that's not old at all. We can get this working. It'll be five or six times faster than when you first uh, had the problem. So, you know, they're so smooth. Yeah, and they, they're leveraging, you know, people who without a lot of computer knowledge from the get-go, right? Or they yeah. wouldn't have gone in there. And so, I, you know, they, and they're trained. I mean, they make a lot of money for every bot they can create, right? They're trying to own that PC, and then they, they sell off. You know, thousands of them at a time. Just well, like, let's talk know. about that. The, the, you're making a bot. Yeah, it's a business, right? Sure. So uh, you you zombify a computer. You turn it into a zombie. That's a, a piece of a botnet. Yeah. So when you want to attack a big target, when you want to break some serious code, you can use that processing power, that internet power from all the computers that you've compromised. And the people that are compromised might not even know it. Yeah. Right. Well, they're, today there's yeah. mining cryptocurrency on it, if nothing else, while while it's waiting to be used for something else. Right. You know. So I mean, you know what's going on. Yeah. How many awesome. of them are owned right now? If we, if we looked on Shodan, you know, what, seven hundred fifty thousand. I don't know. That's Is that tons. Shodan dot org? Dot io. Dot io. Shodan. S H O D A N. Yeah, and then you can you can go look and see who, who's advertising what size botnets. I mean, there's guys right. there's guys that unleash you sixty thousand bots for you know something per hour or something per uh, usually fifteen minute increments, right? I mean, it's all on the dark web. Right. A lot of that stuff's got to be yeah. driving your business, right? How do you what do you monitor on a daily basis to make sure you're on top of these kind of situations? Mm -hmm. Now you got U.S. CERT. We have InfraGuard, which is FBI and civilian sector together. Mm -hmm. uh, what else do you monitor? So IC3, which is the Internet um, Computer Crime Center, which is the one that actually came out with the, you know, the, ad the advisory for the US, U.S. CERT. Right. Um, DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, has a lot of advisories. Uh, but yeah, InfraGuard and, and U.S. CERT, SANS, SANS, SANS are, those are the big ones. Um, Every once in a while, NSA will put something out, yeah? Yeah, yes, sure. Every once in a while. They're, yeah. But they clear, they look closer to the vest. More DOD, NSA. those guys, yeah. They just, yeah. They're usually backing up DHS, which is their... Their mouthpiece, yeah, which is good. None, you know, they all yeah. work together. So in yeah. none of the alerts in the past, I'd say five years, ex with the exception of when the uh, FBI tools got or the NSA tools got leaked out, none of them have ever been really too like, <coughs> oh, that's blowing my mind. You right. know, none of them have really caught me by surprise. So, um, yeah, Mariah was a big one. Yeah, 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 that was one of those tools. Yeah, right. Yeah. And right. It, it's it's hitting it's hitting hard again too with the rans the uh, Petya virus and you know it's, it's so ransomware. Yeah. This is a great one, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have to have a response team for ransomware. You have to have this, yeah. right? What do you do if I called you up? Oh, my my accountant double clicked on something and now our whole network is encrypted. Help. Yeah. What, it, what's your first response? It's Assessment. <laughs> yeah. I isolate, you know, so yeah. the first... You don't the empathy first, I'm so first. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I've dealt with ransomware uh, several times in, in my experience. Um, it really comes down to a business decision. If you're coming to us uh, for the first time and saying we've been exposed to ransomware and they've got all our shared files, they've got all of our business data, I'm going to ask, well, have you? do you guys have the backup? Do you guys have shadow copy? Now a lot of these these uh, ransomwares will disable the shadow copy feature in Windows first before they start. Yeah. Uh, and then encrypting. there's a delay. And then yeah. Yeah. And then so you can't even get to the uh, you know those old automatic copies. If you don't have a good backup solution and you get hit with ransomware, um, there's not much you can do because a lot of them are encrypted with RSA type encryption, which is you know DoD strength level encryption. Yeah, encryption's good. You, you just can't you can. unencrypt it. Do you, do you tell them ever to, to uh, I know there's a, a slim chance if you keep the power on, mm -hmm. you can get into main memory mm -hmm. and the key might still be there. Yeah, have you guys ever been, do you ever try that? Yeah, so what they'll do is, it, the way RSA works is it uses the private and, and, and public key. So it'll encrypt with the public key and then you have to have that private key to unencrypt it. So even with the public key, you wouldn't actually be able to reverse engineer it most of the time. Um, I haven't ever had success with having it powered on. And, I don't know anybody and, that's had that success. Yeah. I just read the article and I'm like, yeah. that's, that's a neat theory, yeah. but I've never heard of anyone being able to 
And the only, the only real success I've had in recovery from uh, ransomware is either restoring from backup um, to where you're going to lose at least a little bit of data um, from when the ransomware attack hit to when your last backup right, data set was. Right, gap, yeah. Or, um, and the FBI doesn't recommend this, but it becomes a business decision, pay the ransom. Pay the ransom. And, Aren't you taking a chance, though? They don't have to give yeah. you the key. No. They don't have to, but you know what? It's their business model at stake then. Uh, I haven't seen anybody pay the ransom and not get the key back yet, and that's just my base, my own experience. I, I can't say if that that's true all across the board. I've, I've heard stories, but when you pay the ransom, it behooves them to give you the key because otherwise, if people aren't trusting that they'll get they'll the key, then they'll never dollar. make the payment. It's a business model. Right. You, yeah. gotta, you gotta comb through their network and clean look for what's been left Absolutely, behind. Absolutely, yeah. You know, just because now you're back working. Right. You know, Doesn't mean they didn't drop something back soon. in there. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> something that looks different, but you it's know the same what? guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, do you guys report this to the FBI? It should be reported to the yeah. FBI. Um, all these things should be, in from the consumer level, from the home level, it should be reported to the FTC as well. So if you if you're falling for these like tech scams, mm. the Federal Trade Commission is actually the people that they're the consumer protection. They handle uh, phone the, systems and stuff. Yeah, the FTC. FTC. That's no, the FCC. Yeah. FCC. Oh, sorry. Right. FTC Federal Trade. Right. So they're the consumer protection arm of the government. Do customers who have been hit by ransomware ever ask you, "Hey, can you track where my money went?" That that happens, and that's that's when you pull in the FBI level assets. Um, you can actually go in, if you make the payment via uh, via Bit cryptocurrency, yeah, Bitcoin, 99% right. of the time it's Bitcoin or right, Litecoin. Right, right. So if you make that pay payment, you can actually track the transaction and you know where that transaction gets ends up. So if the FBI has a list of wallets that are you know, being used for these transactions, they they may be able to do something with Interpol. Right, yeah, but the biggest problem is if, if it's, it's all going to Ukraine, Ukraine you know, China, right. North Korea, right? yeah, something like that. You'll never get it back. Yeah, North Korea. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, they're not very that. money driven now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think the FBI's biggest. Uh, I'm not going to speak for them, but I've I've heard what they've said that they're mm -hmm. working with Interpol and these other agencies. They're they're trying to bust up these rings, you know, like. Thank but God. that's not going to stop these onesie twosies, people from going onto the dark web, ordering an exploit mm -hmm. kit, and just doing it. You know, yeah, the kids. It's I mean, getting it's all too easy, right? And the kids right. are, the, there's, what, 10,000 new people a day coming online, right? Yeah. They got access, they're living in, they're making a buck a day as, a, as their living wage, and if they can double or triple that with just a little bit of ransomware, yeah. well, they carry you no know, money. Yeah, it's a new movie, it's out, but I think we're actually them. gonna go to this Ready Player One. I think we're all gonna be there. Mm. Uh, with the final couple seconds, we got about 30 seconds left in the show, I want you guys to talk up your business. Tell us what you do. Why should we go to you? How do we save money with you? Yeah. Tell us who you are. Sure. I, so in terms of IT, um, small businesses, we really help companies with their technology. So our typical customer, they're busy doing, like you said, their real estate, engineering. Um, security is a very, very big thing. And, and Tim can talk more about the security aspect of that as well. Yeah. If you want. So yeah, we're, we're actually, we have a really good package together um, with the security incident event management where we aggregate all the data going in and out of your network. It's affordable. It works from a small business all the way up to enterprise level businesses. And we're, it's 24 hour, 24 seven, you know, security operations center monitoring the stuff that's going in and out of your network so that when we stop things before they happen, hopefully that's our, that's our intent is to, make the system secure so that ransomware, when you click on it, it doesn't do anything. That's, no, that's, that's, the, that's the ultimate model right there. Thanks for being on the show, you guys. And uh, hopefully we'll get you guys back. Um, and on that show, we'll start drinking again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on the Cyber Underground. Join us next week. Until then, stay safe.